If you've got an ugly radiator that you really want to hide, let's make a radiator cover for it. I'm making my radiator cover from 18mm MDF. So I started by cutting the pieces I need at my table saw. These pieces can be cut with a circular saw and a straight edge if you haven't got a table saw. You can make a radiator cover any design you like, but I'm keeping this one quite simple. Now obviously when it comes to the dimensions you need to cut the MDF to, that is all based on the radiator that you want to hide. For me, I wanted to hide the little pipes at the bottom of the radiator as well, so I included that in my measurements, so do keep that in mind. If you want to hide the pipes, if you want to cover them up, make sure you include that in the overall dimensions for the radiator cover. There are many options for joinery, but I opted to use a loose tongue and groove method. You can of course use pocket hole screws, half lap joints, dominoes, biscuits, anything you deem fit really. Radiator covers don't take a lot of load. I started by routing a 6mm groove at the router table, the full length of the two side pieces. This groove is set back from the edge to allow the front panel to sit roughly 5mm in from the front. The rest of the 6mm grooves are created using a palm router and a 6mm slot cutting bit. These grooves receive small strips of 6mm thick MDF. This creates the loose tongue to join the two grooves together. Plenty of wood glue secures them in place. Before I join the two pieces together, I first marked out where the horizontal pieces would attach. I measured down 50mm from the top to allow for hot air to escape from the radiator and into the room. I also measured 50mm up from the bottom to make the design look even. Using the palm router and slot cutting bit again, I created the groove needed for the joinery. I could then add wood glue and join the side pieces to the front upright pieces. The same method is used to join the horizontal pieces to the side pieces too. This radiator cover design has a separate front panel that will just pop in and out of place. This is to make it easier to dry clothes on the radiator if need be. You can make the frame as one complete piece if you don't need a removable front panel. This frame got the same loose tongue and groove joinery. Before painting, I routed a 6mm deep recess in the back of the removable panel. This will later receive some diamond mesh. Now when it came to the actual painting, I had an absolute nightmare. Usually, I would just use eggshell, get a couple of coats on, sand it, put my finishing coat on. But I didn't have any eggshell in. And during lockdown, I didn't really want to be going out to go and buy some. So I thought I'll use what I've got lying around. And I'd got some spray paints. And I know that's not ideal for the edge of MDF. But I thought it would literally be two more coats than usual. So I thought, just do it. Get it done. So I sprayed it. And it just kept drinking it up and drinking it up and drinking it up. I went through two full cans. Still not getting any headway with it. So I did actually go and get the eggshell paint in the end and that worked hell of a lot better. It started to cover it a lot better and it sealed the edges nicely. But I did post on my Instagram stories that I was having troubles with it. And I came up with the idea to actually finally test all the different methods that people suggest is the best way to paint the edge of MDF. So I've got some suggestions and I'm going to be trying them out and putting them in a video. So I'll make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon next to it so you get a notification when that video comes out. We'll find out once and for all what's the best way to paint MDF edges because I've got to figure it out sooner or later. Once the base coats of paint were applied, I could cut the diamond mesh to size with some tin snips. I then secured it in the recess with staples. I could then apply two final coats of hammered black paint. I chose hammered black to try and match the look of the rest of my black metal bedroom furniture. With the paint drying, I could turn my attention to the top shelf. I opted to use an old scaffold board for this, so I cut it to width on the table saw before running it through my new thickness planer. I 
After cutting it to length, I sanded it smooth and applied two coats of Osmar wood wax finish. I went for walnut to darken the lighter tone of the scaffold board. I applied it with a foam roller and then rubbed it in with a cotton rag. To attach the shelf to the radiator cover frame, I opted for dowels. I drilled two 8mm holes in the top of the side pieces on both sides. I then measured and marked where to drill the matching holes in the underside of the shelf. I placed one hole 40mm in from the back and another 110mm in from the back. The 8mm dowels can then be glued in place and the shelf secured. I needed to cut a small recess at the bottom of the cover to enable it to fit over my skirting board. The jigsaw did scuff the surface, so I gave it a light spray with paint to cover the scuffs. To secure the radiator cover to the wall, I used one Kiku clip. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but this will allow the radiator cover to be removed easily if need be, while still holding it tight to the wall. The last thing to do was to add the teal fabric to the back of the front panel to complete my design. I secured it in place with staples and I made sure to pull the fabric taut to remove wrinkles and prevent sagging. I have heard you can get a cream for that but I haven't tried it. Then it's just a case of fitting the cover in place and I think you'll agree it's a big improvement over the ugly white radiator. So that's it then guys, I really hope you found this video inspiring. If you've got an old looking radiator and you want to hide it, making a radiator cover really is the way to go. It brings the whole room together and it just makes it feel a lot more homely in my opinion. If you don't feel that confident about actually making the radiator cover, you could always buy a pre-made one and then customise it yourself paint it different colours, change the look at the top, even change the front panels that covers the radiator. You could add material like I did, or the mesh, go to town with it, make it match your decor and make it your own. I want to say a massive thank you as always to my Patreon supporters. I've had a new supporter this month and that's Jeff. Thank you so much Jeff. I really appreciate the support that you're showing me and the channel. And I've got a little bit of an update regarding Patreon as well. This is actually going to be the last month that I use Patreon um, just to help fund the channel. It's enabled me to do so much, buying materials for this radiator cover, buying equipment such as my camera and editing software just to make these videos possible. But I'm moving away from Patreon now. Um, you've supported me all this time and I can't thank you enough for it. But I've recently been offered a full-time job opportunity, um, which I have obviously jumped at. So now I'm gonna be able to use that income to better fund my channel and hopefully bring you all some much better content. So I'll keep an eye out for that in the future. I will give you more updates as and when I can, um, but hopefully the future is looking good and I can't wait to share more about it with you. So thank you all for watching again. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click the subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications. When I upload a new video, you get a pop-up on your phone or an email letting you know there's something there to watch. Thank you all again for watching.